Good. Chugging along and glad to see you all. So uh, before we get started, I have budgeted 90 minutes for this session with a five minute break in the middle. If um, that is too much for you, I can go to 75 with extreme briskness and no break. So do we have 90 minutes or 75 minutes? What does the group want? I'm fine either way. Val's fine sure? either way. Either way. Either way, Ellie. John, does that work for you? 90 yeah. minutes? Okay, great. Yeah, 90 minutes works for me. Good. Okay, and you're f free to stand here or sit. And just for context, this is where I interviewed all three of you. So each of you has gone through the same interview questions. So we're going to take that as a given. You know what you said <clears throat> to the questions, and you're welcome to bring points up from that or, or new points today. But I'm not going to go over or summarize what you said. That's that's a basis to build on. And this is what I call Magua's Castle. It's uh, it's the Shaw campus. It's a thousand meters in the air. And one of his students has put this up, uh, Marina or Ch Chala, if you remember Chala, who spoke at the Virtual World Conference. So um, All right, yeah. he, he was very proud and made, I mean, invited me to come here. So I thought, what the heck? I said, can we use this for the session? He said, sure. So uh, Pretty I'm impressive. <laughs> So yes, I'm, going to, I'm going to get started. Um, I am recording this for your private use. It's, and what that means is I usually put it on Dropbox, but that doesn't always work for people. So I put it on YouTube as an unpublished video. Um, so, so if there's okay. anything juicy that comes out of it that you're trying to remember, besides what's in chat, you'll have that to look at and skip ahead through. So I'm going to go ahead and move up to the front for the first slide and say, welcome. Welcome. This is a sustainable event production. Sustainable event production visioning session regarding where the Virtual World Education Consortium organization is now and where you want the Virtual World Educational Organization to be. This session will be recorded for your use. You'll need something with which to draw or write, something with which to, with which to draw and write. So a paper and pencil, okay, paper and pencil, and a browser to watch YouTube at two points. So the first thing we're going to do is called clear the mind. So I need you to take out that paper and pencil. And let me know when you have that handy. You can just type a yes or say ready. And I'll ask you to tell me when you're ready about things until we kind of get in the habit and you know you're all good. So I want you to think of the word vision, V-I-S-I-O-N, vision. And I want you to repeat the word vision to yourself over and over until it becomes an empty and meaningless sound. For example, vision, vision, vision. However, repeat the word vision to yourself until it becomes empty and meaningless as a sound. Now, look at your paper and ask the paper. Say to the paper, paper, what shape do you want me to draw on you? What shape? Now, draw whatever shape occurs to you. Paper, what shape do you want me to draw on you? And draw whatever shape occurs to you. And let me know when you've done that. And you can say yes if you don't want to have to type all the time. Okay, Val's a yes, Ellie's yes. And John, I don't know if you're saying yes or are you still there? Okay, there, good. Now, look at the first shape and ask it. First shape, 
What second shape do you want me to draw next to you? What second shape next to you? And draw whatever shape occurs to you. And again, you can just let me know when you're done. Ellie's done. done. Okay, great. Now look at your second shape and ask it. Second shape, what third shape do you want me to draw next to you? And draw whatever third shape occurs to you. I've got Ellie. Good. No, it's on. Great. Okay, now the next step. I'm going to ask you to watch a video called New Light One. And as you watch and listen to this video called New Light One, I just want you to notice your thoughts and feelings and sensations. I'm going to paste it in the chat and then I'll count down three, two, one, and it takes about two minutes. So three, two, one, go. And you might want to mute your mics. Stop your video. Stop the video. So, Ellie, what's uh, what's the sitch? Sorry, I I have a new um, headset and it's not recognizing it. Give me a second. I'm sorry to slow everybody down. No problem. Well, we can we can start over easily. I should have. I'm sorry. I apologize. I should have confirmed that you could, you all could hear your. But congratulations on a new headset. <laughs> And just everyone rewind, just drag it back to the beginning so that when we do start, we'll all be synchronized. I'll paste the link again, Ellie, and then you can test it to yourself and then tell me if it's working and then we'll restart. Ellie, are you there? I am desperately trying to get it to work. <laughs> okay, no problem. Just keep muttering at us so we know you're there. <laughs> I thought, okay, oh, my, oh my God, it killed her mic. Now she can't talk her here. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I can hear you guys, so that's why I'm, I'm, having, I'm struggling. One second. No problem. The joy of tech, huh?
It sure doesn't. As soon as you get one thing fixed, something else seems to break down. <laughs> well, that's the. I, I logged in at a quarter of to come back to here, and it said unavailable. They were rebooting the child region, and so oh, I was desperately setting up these slides at my mainland location as a as a backup. <laughs> and of course, on the mainland, it's uh, it took a, a couldn't get the slide. Well, I'm, I have a small region, so the slides are bigger than I thought. So then I thought, I'll go up to my skybox. <laughs> then I went up to my skybox, and then I was just getting ready to do that when uh, I tested. John said, where are we meeting? Where are we meeting? I said, oh, man. So uh, then I, I tried I tried <laughs> Shaw again real quick, and sure enough, it, it, uh, it was back. So yeah. OK, I see Ellie is typing. Okay, she oh, says no. YouTube's working and she's going to relog, so that should work. Okay, that's a start. Yeah, sometimes these headsets and microphones don't work for one application, but then if you yeah. they work for the other, and it yeah, that that is so hard, especially when you're in the middle of a class. You know, it's like <laughs> exactly. never, it's it's always at a time when you're presenting or something. Yeah. When you're trying to do something else, it never happens when you're testing or practicing or anything. Right, right. It's always when you don't want it to. Hey, let's see. Can can you hear us, Ellie? Kannst du uns hören? Now she can hear okay. YouTube, but she can't hear us. Right now, I'm hearing you guys. So let oh, could good. you give me the link one more time? I bet it's going to work this time. Never get a new headset. It seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> okay, and your test? Are you testing your YouTube again, or are we good to go? Um, yeah, I just got the link again, and here it goes. So okay, so everybody, go ahead. I'll paste the link again, and we'll. we'll... Restart in a synchronized manner, or if, to, as synchronized as I can get. Here I go, pacing it, and when you see it, just go ahead and click it. And let me know when you're done. Okay. Okay, Ellie's done. Okay, Val's done.
John's done. Excellent. Good job. Okay. Now, look, look back at your three shapes. Look at the three shapes as a whole in the context of the paper and ask them, three shapes, what else do you want me to draw next to you? And draw whatever additions occur to you. Take a minute to draw whatever additions occur to you. And then let me know when you're done. Okay. Okay. John's done. Bell's done. Emily's done. Excellent. Now I'm going to all each one of you individually. And John, let me start with you. What did you notice and what caught your attention about this clearing the mind? What did you notice? What caught your attention? Anything is fair game. Uh, it, it put me in a new, gave me a new perspective, kind of opened things up a little bit, um, got me focusing. New perspective, opening up, refocusing. Thank you. Val, what did you notice? What caught your attention? It was difficult to shed the meaning of the word. So, but when I repeated it and repeated it, I tried to make it meaningless, and I found that very interesting. Interesting to shed the meaning. Got it. Thank you. Ellie, what did you notice? What caught your attention? Um, <clears throat> so, it took a while. And I had to repeat the word over and over and kind of play with the word um, because my brain is always just going in so many directions. But um, but eventually it worked. Got it. Very good. So what we just did is how we're going to do going forward. Uh, I'll be polling you after various prompts. And it's... Uh, you can say whatever your responses are, and if you want to ditto what somebody has remarked, then you can just say ditto. For example, Ellie, in my jargon, would say she dittoed Val regarding uh, her, what caught her attention was repeating the word vision until it became empty and meaningless. Does that make sense? I'll be polling you after various prompts and you, your original responses, and you can say ditto. Okay. Okay. All right. Yep. Okay. Now, now let me visually stand with my avatar pointer. We just finished clear the mind. Oops. Our next part is visioning. And I would like you to look at the model. Actually, I should have stood up and gone over there. There it is. the model. This is some data for us to consider. This is the possibility opportunity action model for bringing stages of existence, bringing an idea to reality. So in the model, possibility is what you want to get done. Opportunity is what you actually have the capacity to get done. Action is what you actually get done. And I tell a quick anecdote. I took a drive out west some time back and I stopped at the Grand Canyon as one does. It was a, and I was standing at one of the main viewpoints and way down at the bottom of the Grand Canyon, I could see this intriguing 
little log cabin with a little smoke coming out of a chimney. And it was on a brown, grassy little island in the middle of the river at this bottom of this huge canyon. And I thought, wouldn't it be neat to be down there at that little cabin and stay overnight? So that's possibility from afar, what you want to get done. Trouble-wise, I was up on top of the rim. It was heaven knows how far away as the crow flies. What capacity did I have to get down there? So I started looking around. And the first thing I saw was a bunch of people near me with big heavy hiking boots and hiking staffs and backpacks and floppy hats and sunglasses and water bottles and sunscreen. They were, by golly, going to hike down the side of the canyon and explore the canyon. I said, well, I could do that. I could hike down to that little cabin at the bottom. Then I looked some more, and sure enough, over in one area, there was the trail ride burrow rental area. You could hire a trail guide to take you on some little donkey burrows, and instead of walking, you could ride this little hee-hawing beast down and explore the canyon. I said, oh. And then, yet again, I saw on the other side this heliport. You could hire a helicopter ride with some friends and fly anywhere you wanted in the canyon and hopefully down there where I wanted to land. So there were, I had the capacity, if I had either the physical stamina and equipment to hike or some finances to rent a burrow and some physical stamina or a lot of finances to hire the helicopter and maybe some friends to go with me. So that's opportunity. Then finally, what you actually get done. So I punted. I said, well, I'm on a long drive. I'll just keep driving my little rental car, which I did. But later on, I found an end of the canyon that was lower, and I parked to the side, and I just walked down. So action is what you actually get done. So if you look at the bottom, possibility is what you see for the VWEC. Overlapping areas of interest and practice. But possibility is also where you see what's still missing. What could be that doesn't exist yet? What's that beautiful little cabin far away or whatever catches your attention? That's possibility. Opportunity is what are you in a position to do something about? What does VWEC have in terms of credibility, wellness of its members, finances, the continued interest of its members, the time. That's opportunity. And then action. Action is existence. Things do not exist until action has been taken. And existence, in our case, is people going to scheduled events in dedicated places. So that's our focus for today. So now I'm going to ask you some questions, and we'll do the prompts and then periodic poll. So this is where your paper may come in handy. I'm going to ask you to jot down your thoughts in response to some questions. First question. What will the Virtual World Education Consortium look like in five years? Let me know when you've jotted some thoughts down. What will the Virtual World Education Consortium look like in five years?
two or three headlines would be fine. Okay, valve done. Okay, Ellie's done and John's done. Next question. Again, jot down your thoughts. What will media headlines say about the Virtual World Education Consortium in five years? What will media headlines say about the Virtual World Education Consortium in five years? Okay. okay, good. So let's review your responses. And this time, let's start with Ellie. Ellie, what stood out for you in your responses? Um, what stood out or what were my responses, or is that the same thing? Yes. <laughs> in in so other words, I want you, I want you guys to you know summarize what are you what are you seeing and saying. Go. Sure. So I had two responses. Um, one is it could be gone. We keep hearing about um, people constantly tell us that they tried this and it it didn't last. Um, but I personally believe that it has it's going to hinge on Second Life and Virtual World success. Um, it could be very robust, very supportive, um, much more than what we're already doing and has grown and is vibrant. Got it. Val, what are your responses? Um, well, I will ditto, Ellie, that we don't know, but um, here's my hope of what I believe. VWAC in five years will have a network across numerous metaverse platforms for teaching and learning with leaders promoting awareness of the evolving metaverse landscapes. Got it. John, what are your responses telling you? Um, <clears throat> first word I put down was mature. Um, I then see exciting space for discussion um, home for education and academic thought in the metaverse and a community of active academics so not just educators but academics got it all right good job okay let's go to the next round so jot down your thoughts in response to the following questions. What does the Virtual World Education Consortium look like now? What does VWEC look like now? And imagine you're an outsider. What does it look like now? Go ahead and write your thoughts down.
Okay. 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 Next question. Whose interests does Virtual World Education Consortium's existence serve? Whose interests does VWEC's existence serve? Okay. 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 Now we're going to dig down a little into this. What career or what profession does participation in the Virtual World Education Consortium affect? What career or profession does participation in VWEC affect? Okay. Okay. Next question. What education level does participation in the Virtual World Education Consortium affect? What education level does participation in VWEC affect? Okay. 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 Question. What regional or what geographic level does participation in the Virtual World Education Consortium affect? What regional or geographic level does participation in VWEC affect?
Okay. All right. So let's review your responses. This time, Val, what are your responses to these five questions telling you? And these are a lot of questions, so you all have a little more time to go over. What are your responses telling you, Val? Oh, even you know, where to begin? Okay, so I, what does it look like? It looks like a bunch of educators that just won't let go. We're, we're convinced of the potential. <laughs> we're not going to let go of this. And we're convinced <laughs> of the potential for education, so we're trying to pull efforts, but open to share. Well, now, who do we serve? I think they clearly serve the next generation of learners. It's about the future. It's not about us. It's about how learning has changed forever, and we're serving digital citizens that used to sit in physical classrooms. Um, and our ca careers that it might impact, I can't think of a single career that it doesn't impact or profession. Every single career can teach and learn in this environment, even a hermit. You know, <laughs> hermits are welcome. I mean, it doesn't matter who you are. There, it, it, it can impact you to be in the metaverse or be aware of it. Educational level right now, currently, I would say 18 plus. We're not really affecting K-12, but I think there's the opportunity to do that. And there's some isolated instances where educators are doing that. Um, and the geographical region, I was interested in my response because I feel like we're very global. So there's a, there's a global network. You can be anywhere in the world, but the bigger divide is the economic divide that because the um, limited access for people in poverty that can't get good graphics cards, that is more of a divide than geographical location. So that's it. Okay, Don, what are your responses telling you? Um, <clears throat> interesting, uh, somewhat different. Um, what it looks like now to me is um, an interesting active community, uh, lots of diverse interests, um, very welcoming and supportive, but not clear about its purpose. Um, the int I think the interests that are served at the moment are the current members, Linden Lab, the students, the universities that are engaged, some of the schools and the teachers themselves in Second Life. Um, in terms of who it's affecting, I think it's kind of limited to academics, educators, you know, and, and that broad kind of catch all. I'm not sure it's necessarily affecting anybody outside of that, uh, that scope at the moment. In terms of the level, similar to, to uh, Val Ditto, although I think informal training is a, a very important level that's, or a, a very active level at the moment, a bit of K-12. I mean, there are some activity there, uh, probably mostly by K-12 teachers rather than students. But um, And I, I, again, like Val, I think in terms of the region that's affected, it's the developed world. So the Southern Hemisphere, the the developing and uh, undeveloped world is not really in evidence here. Thank you. And Ellie, the what privileged are privileged world, perhaps I should say? Sorry. Yes. Ellie, what are your responses telling you? Well, um, my colleagues have certainly reflected most of the things that I had jotted down. I would just add that. On number three, I was writing down things and all of a sudden I stopped and said, oh no, it's students. <laughs> That's who we're about as students um, and everyone around that. And then the, uh, the other piece I think is I so appreciate what we're talking about as far as developed world and people with computers, um, the digital divides economically is is a very big deal on all of our hearts. Um, so I don't think I have a whole lot to add except this thing. Got it. Okay, good job, you guys. <laughs> so jot down your thoughts in response to the following question. Between the Virtual World Education Consortium, the organization now, and Virtual World Education Consortium, the organization to be. What's missing like a possibility, the presence of which would make a difference? 
between VWEC, the now organization, and VWEC, the organization to be, what's missing like a possibility, the presence of which would make a difference? Okay. 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 So let's review responses, starting with you again, Ellie. Ellie, what did your responses tell you? Um, well, I'm a little, um, I don't know, not excited about what my response is. I feel like that what what's missing and what would be helpful is administrative support in institutions to help um, other faculty that aren't already here um, value and be able to take advantage of what we are, we're doing here. Got it. And Val, what are your responses telling you? I think what's missing is exposure to a wider audience. Nobody knows about us because they can't find us. So some way to promote to other academics awareness that we exist. Got it. Don, what are your responses telling you? Ditto. And I would summarize it by saying serious um, academic institution institutional engagement. So engagement by academic universities um, on a on a governance level. So rather than seeing this as just an interesting or nice little uh, game you can play with, that actually this is seen as a serious site of learning. Oh, you got it. You got a you got a ditto there from from yeah. Ellie. Okay, now I promised you a break. So we're going to take a quick five-minute break. Look at your clock. I see uh, 8.44. So be back here at 8.50 or mentally here. I mean, your avatars aren't going anywhere. So uh, <laughs> stand up, scratch, whatever you need to do. Five minutes and we'll resume. Good job. Thank you. Thank you.
Sounds like someone's back. Yep. Yep. I'm back. Here. Val's back. Ellie's back. All right. So I wanted to, uh, I, I have an official next part, but I was looking over some other old material and I want to copy and paste this in chat and read it to you. This is more data, kind of like the model is POA model. And this is because several of you in the interview said it's gone way better than I ever expected. So this is stage five of a more advanced model for bringing an idea into reality. Our current state is enhanced. It seems like things are happening beyond what we'd set out to accomplish. We've met our goals earlier than we thought. We've already already met our initial goals, I've heard some of you say. New methods are being invented and tuned. New activities and results are happening out of bounds of the original structure. People are talking about it and even arguing about whether it's a good thing or not. And does it fit into the theme of BWEC? A newer and bigger expression has developed. And methods and measures and structures are being changed to accommodate it. Results are accelerating, getting outside our circle and beyond our context. To transform will require going from enhance to exceed. Just what she wanted to hear. Grin. So looking yes, at <laughs> you're looking at your responses. The big question is what stand and hearing each other's responses and having had five minutes for it to soak in, what stands out for you as the one of the core leaders of the leadership team, members of the core leadership team? What suggests it to yourself to do now? moving forward and john if you don't mind i'll ask you first what stands out what suggests itself to do moving forward well the biggest thing that stands out for me is to try and devise a strategy to encourage institutions to engage formally with vwec <laughs> so that the engagement level is not by individual academics and educators doing it you know kind of as part of their job kind of privately with maybe tacit support from their institutions but to bring that to the next level and have vwec become the space that um universities wish to join when they're engaging with the metaverse oh that is a I'm going to, if you don't mind, put you on the spot. Are you declaring that you're going to do that? Well, I've been wondering how to do that for quite some time. Well, and, I didn't. Uh, ask, I didn't ask you if you knew how to do it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I am. I, I, but to be honest, I'm failing in doing that. Is probably the honest answer. I've been attempting. That is to an do earlier. That. That's the fail stage of stages of existence. We're already. Yeah. Okay. Would it excite you to take that on? Would that be pertinent to your other outside interests to take on what you just said? Is it? Are you in a position to take on what you just said? Are you positioned to um, do this? I, I am positioned. I'm not necessarily excited about it. It's it's kind of boring work, and it's <laughs> it's work. That, you know, just said it needs to be done. It's I can, it's bureaucratic. It's all that. So no, I'm far from excited about doing it. I'd love if somebody else would take it on. Okay, but I fair am enough. In a position to do it. Fair enough. Uh, and I so, do have, you know, I can do it. So, if someone wanted to do it, they could come at be, you would advise them. Oh, yeah. Okay. I know, I think I have a responsibility to do it, to, even though I find it a bit boring. So, you I other two, responsibility to do it. you are John's committed listeners. So, <laughs> if you, if as leadership team, you feel that what John feels is, is missing like a possibility, has some validity then there's room for that to grow now that it's been stated in public that's the first thing that's called formulate formulate what's needed 
uh, uh, gee, I'd like to be down at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. And then the question is, is there any Cape, you know, opportunity, et cetera. Well, now that I've scared everybody off, um, Ellie, what are, <laughs> what are your responses telling you about what to do now moving forward? Well, there's a couple of things, though. John's statement is probably spot on, and I am just like him. I'm not interested in doing that. Um, <laughs> and I've actually come, been very public about that, that I feel like that is uh, not necessarily VWEC's job, but maybe it is, and I'm, maybe I'm limiting this, and I do apologize if that's the case. Um, on my own personal thoughts about this, I the other thing that he said was, I feel he said something like we having a clear purpose or that might not have been your statement, John, but something like that, that I wrote down in big letters. And I, if that is the case, I know what I feel like I know what our goals and purpose is, but if, if others do not, then making that more clear is important to me. And then I also feel like that, um, engaging other passionate educators to help us keep this going would be something I would add. Uh, but I would ditto what John says, and also I'm probably leaving right now. <laughs> That's a, a joke. <laughs> and uh, re regarding making the purposes and goals clearer to the outside public, is that something you're declaring you're going to take on? Oh, yes. I don't mind doing that at all. Okay. Yeah. Are, you, I, I are you... Go ahead. I was just going to say, I will say that Midori said to us yesterday, and this may get us way off topic, and I don't mean to, um, she was asking for conferences, physical conferences that they could that they could attend, maybe have a booth out or something like that. So I think that that speaks to some of what John was saying. So there might be other ways of approaching that without it being just one person's job. Yes, actually, we'll, we'll be segueing to a where you can talk about whatever you want. Um, okay, so making the purposes and, and goals clearer, you're taking that on. And let me point to this capac uh, uh, opportunity thing. Part of whether you're in a position, any of us is in a position to take something on is, is it in our own personal interest? Do we have the interest to do it? So we could see that something obvious needs to be done, but we have no personal interest in it. That's fair. There's, you know, the world has more than, than any one of us could take on. So it's really, when I say, do we have the capacity to do it, is not only the, the what I call it, the commitment to do it and the competence to do it. And, and both are necessary, which... which uh, on the other hand, as I suggested with John, all of you talk about getting new blood in, you finding some new blood that would be have the interest to do it with a little help might uh, might fit the bill. Now, what are your responses telling you? What's standing out for you about what to take on or what to do moving forward? Okay, first, just to kind of piggyback on what Ellie just said, she she dittoed John's use, and he said this several times today, about being about focusing more on serious academics. And I find that so validating because I'm so often accused of being way too serious, you know, not dancing in my avatar. And it's like, so that makes me feel good that we, we're all clear that that's really what we're here for. But um, what stands out to me is also... Uh, it aligns to John's earlier comment when, and I wrote this down with a star because he said one thing that is we have an unclear focus, and um, and then Ellie I think also mentioned this. I think the reason that it's unclear is because it evolved so quickly. It shot off like a rocket. It initially was just going to be a discussing you know a group to discuss quarterly. That was the only goal, and suddenly it became this gigantic goal, and it evolved. And, uh, and we've accomplished so much, but I think that key point, the two things that I think we still need, what stands out is we've got to mentor new leadership. So it's not just a few people at the top, you know, trying to bring others in. We've got to mentor new leadership while still continuing that exciting momentum that took off like a rocket. By, by And I think we've done good by not, by keeping it in one area, not trying to do too many activities, but promote 
the other communities. It's not about just a few people. It's promoting not just a few, but all the communities. And that's hard to do in balance. Um, but I think that we can clarify that focus and that purpose through, more, um, through a clearer visibility, both online and in world. Okay. So regarding recruiting new leadership, is that something you're declaring you're taking on? It's always been my goal is, to, is I'm a librarian of people, not books. So trying to figure out ways, though, because people have different words for mentoring. So I, didn't ask you if you knew, I didn't ask if you knew how to do it. I asked, are you taking that on? Uh, yes, absolutely. Okay. Continuing to take it on. <laughs> All right. And when there's something that we take on that we don't know how to do, um, it's probably best to go find people that are already good at it. Do, out of curiosity, do the three of you know anybody who's really good at recruiting uh, new leadership, new blood? Well, we know clearly who not to ask. <laughs> no, who's, who's good at it? Who's, who's good at bringing new blood in? John is saying, hmm, hmm, just as a starting point. I ditto, John. Hmm. You're ditto the hmm. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, in some of my interviews, somebody mentioned they were astonished at uh, Magua, who not only has brought in a new full-time PhD faculty member, but two full-time PhD paid TAs, and the students that are graduating his courses are coming back and doing uh, follow-up projects like building this castle in the air. He's the one I know who somehow sucks in, I mean, recruits new blood. So just a thought. Okay, good job. We're going to move to the next part here now. And we're, just so you can feel good about it, we're wrapping up here. This is called Restore the Mind. So... At the beginning, I had you empty the mind so you could be an empty vessel to fill up with new thoughts and things. But the mind is too valuable to waste. So we want to leave here in good order with our mind back in working order. So watch and listen to the video called Multiple Dimensions, Multiple Variables. As you watch and listen, to the video. Notice your thoughts and feelings and sensations. I'm going to paste the link in here. I'll give us a countdown if you're ready. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Okay. So just a quick debrief on this. So Ellie, what did you notice or what caught your attention now in this video? 
Well, I was interested in the fact that it's always music, not surprise sidearm. <laughs> and it's much more um, calming than the first one was. Got it. Thank you. Val, what did you notice? What caught your attention? Immediately the drum beat, and I, I was just doodling, and I drew a drum, and it reminded me of Dancer and her community drums, which led my mind to think about how this is real people, real places, real memories. Thank you. And John, what did you notice what caught your attention? Uh, my heartbeat. Uh, it started off, it made me jittery. It was a kind of <laughs> rising tension. <laughs> and I had this sense of it all moving towards an explosion, but that kind of converted into more of a kind of a bursting out of energy than a negative association with an explosion. Got it. And then a final process check. Anybody's fair game. What did you like and what did you miss? What did you wish regarding this session? What did you like and what did you wish? I liked the um, opportunity to think about what we've done over the last year, because I think it was Val said, um, or, and Ellie, well, I know you both agree anyways, that we've, we've achieved an awful lot more than we ever anticipated or expected. It's moved a lot more rapidly. And in a sense, we haven't had a chance to stop and think. So I really liked that opportunity. And I liked the honesty that everybody brought to it in terms of you know being able to look at what we would like to change, what we might like to fix, and so on. Anybody else? What did you like? What did you wish? Yeah, I I liked hearing more different perspectives, even though we kind of know them. It's you get surprises, and I I liked how this kind of activity guides you to to kind of dig into to look at something maybe differently than you 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 normally would. I I and. A, I can't think of what I wish other than, I mean, the time flew. I wish we had more time for opportunities like this. And I, I agree with my colleagues for sure. Um, I think we, we have enough meetings and we do try to express ourselves, but it's good to just sit and think about, um, and from different perspectives, um, using drawing and and music um, to help us hone in on and look back and think ahead. I wish you'd just tell us what to do, sidearm, but I guess that's not part of the process. <laughs> <laughs> I have another like, um, which is the, the process. I really liked the process, sidearm, that you brought us through. I thought the clearing and the uh, refocusing are really useful and it does sharpen up what we're doing so I just really like this process um, what I wish is that we could do this with um, a larger team uh, bring more of our colleagues in um, I, I think this would be very very worthwhile doing with with either a bigger group or a number of smaller groups but I think I would really wish we could carry on with this process and John, can I add to that? Because I, I like that you mentioned the, the process that Sidearm has here. I, I jot down that that I have this, this side issue when I put on the first video. I had this urge to go and do something else while I was listening to the music. You know, I wanted to go check an email, or and I yeah. even had a, I had an urge to put my test on in the background. And it's like I can't be doing two things at once all the time. And so this process. Really, it forced me to focus because you told yeah. me what I was going to have to respond with. So it's a really great process. I agree. Absolutely. All right. Uh, I liked being able to interview each of you and reconnect at a deeper level. And uh, Ellie, especially, I haven't really interacted with you for a long time since our old project together. And... Um, <laughs> And I look forward to the four of us and everyone else that's sucked into, I mean, enthusiastically participating in the student <laughs> challenge and other VWEC activities coming. So that's it. We're done. Good job. Great. Thank you. Awesome. That was really valuable. 
and you're we're welcome to stick around as you long uh we 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 exceeded my expectations we beat the uh the time limit so but you're a, you're a bright class so no surprise <laughs> I'm interested, did we agree when you did our interviews? Were we sim very similar? Were there anything that stuck out that were um, different things that only came up a, a time or two? Are you allowed to tell us that? <laughs> <laughs> if, if it's okay with you, three, I will summarize some kind of highlights that stood out for me. And I, I did interview another person just uh, i practiced on them let me on be honest and they knew i was practicing yeah. um <laughs> sure i'm happy for anything to be uh, there was a general feeling that my god we never expected it to turn out this good this fast so uh yeah. and so that that's a clear message that's come through and you kind of reflected that in some of your comments um, one thing that comes through from outsiders point of view is they think they think that VWEC includes the nonprofit commons, the virtual world best practices and education conference, and um, uh, the virtual ability. They, to them, it's all the same. So uh, you picked up on that pretty well, that to clear, make it clearer. There was a general theme. We're not trying to take anybody else's stuff away from them. That's great. But at the same time, what you need to be people should know what VWC is and, and offers and distinguishes itself, which is the next stage after enhance. So maybe the next time we do this, I'll read you the paragraph called um, uh, Distinguish and Explain. That's where you start writing papers, by the way, guys, and giving interviews. So you're on you're on the way. You're well on the way. Um, there is a uh some perception that VWC primarily serves to colonize Western educational influence and ignores the rest of the civilized world. <clears throat> None of you brought that up, but I will bring it up. Um, we do it the Western way. By God, that's the way we do it. Not because that's what you intend, but it's a perception. There's definitely an interest in physical conferences, uh, uh, more credibility. They'd like participation to be seen as career enhancing and something they could put on their resume and help them with their jobs. Um, that, I wouldn't bring that up, except you've already brought that up in some of your own thoughts. Uh, and the regional and international, uh, whose interest is served? I think you've tried to serve European hours as well as American as best you can. Um, and then the other one is the higher education versus K-12. Um, are you only serving higher ed? Um, you're not serving K-12? I mean, I know there's reasons why K-12 is hard to do, but are you ever going to might be a question an outsider would ask, in which case they might want to belong. But if you're never going to, why should they belong? And since some people, I think one of you told me, oh my God, I'm suddenly teaching a K-12 class that I never haven't taught in years, um, so I, I don't think there's a perception that you're offering assistance to, to K-12. So I'm just reporting on, you know, impressions from other interviews. Maybe you should interview, uh, more of the members. In fact, I would recommend, why don't you try, why we might try interviewing the people you want to recruit to stronger leadership roles. Uh, yeah. find out what they think and feel and what, and in doing so, build a connection and get their interest. And then, you know, give them the call. So, hope that responded to you, Ellie. Maybe it was more than you guys wanted to hear. Uh, no, that was very helpful. Um, I will tell yeah. you not that, I don't mean to seem defensive, but we are making a whole Reg API instance so that K-12 can participate in the student challenge. And both Val and I come from a K-12 background, so um, I, did, I think we don't talk about it very often because it is so challenging. Um, but that's, a, that's really good feedback because I think our hearts are there um, and that's not getting out. 
clear. So thank you for that. And and the all oh, the the uh, Western civilized education. Oh my gosh, that's a huge thing that I'd never thought about. So thank you. It's right. becoming increasingly important and talked about. <clears throat> yes, and we we need to be aware of that and and passing it along as well. Thank you for the Guardian article. Yeah, that's an it's an interesting. That guy has written a book um, on that, which I must get. Um, and he's he's uh, yeah. Well, it's just very interesting. And, and for European, okay, he's coming from a European perspective, but effectively he's talking about the Western world or the whatever right. we're going to call it, the developed world. But it, it's all part of a European influence that goes back a long way, um, and has been when you think about it, incredibly successful in terms of dominating the rest of the world and exploiting the rest of the world and extracting value from the rest of the world for our own benefit. Um, well, this is this is my signal. I'm officially stopping the recording. And like I said, okay. I'll post it for your private use.